I know for a lot of new players, the vast sandbox of Sea of Thieves can seem daunting. In this video, I'm going to try and explain to you in simple terms which trading company will be right for you. I'll be scoring each trading company based off of a few criteria. 1. How much money can you earn? 2. How fun are the missions? And 3. How long are the missions? With that being said, let's get right into it. Hunter's Call there aren't many missions for Hunter's Call in the same way that there are for other trading companies. You will occasionally receive a quest for Hunter's Call from other voyages, but for the most part, your time on Hunter's Call will be spent fishing. While they have broadened the items you can sell to Hunter's Call to include any meat, fish are really the only sustainable and practical source of money. In terms of money, Hunter's Call earns a 3 out of 10. It would be even lower, but occasionally you will catch a rare and expensive fish. However, if you even want the full profit of your fish, you have to spend another hour cooking them. This brings us to the fun rating, which is a generous 2 out of 10. The only real joy you can get from fishing is the scenery and the talks that you can experience during the process. The fishing system is about as deep as a puddle, and same goes for hunting. While the first two ratings may have been harsh, the hunter's call do earn a 9 out of 10 for mission length. That is because you can begin farming fish from the second you log onto the server, up until whenever you feel like stopping. Overall, the Hunter's Call earns a rating of 4.6 out of 10. Gold Hoarders The Gold Hoarders are a treasure hunting company with mostly puzzle based missions. For Gold Hoarders, you will mostly be using your spatial reasoning to dig up chests on an island, as well as hunting the seas for lost vaults of treasure in exploration and loot transfer style missions. Gold Hoarders surprisingly only have a gold rating of 6 out of 10. This is just because of the time it takes to complete the missions, versus the only medium rewards you get. However, the puzzle nature of the missions does earn them a 7 out of 10 rating for fun, with the loot transfer part of the vault missions being the only major detractor. Finally, Gold Hoarders earn a 4 out of 10 for mission length. This is for a few reasons. 1. The riddle quests can be vague and often take a long time to complete. The large camp holds an ancient secret. The large camp, huh? <gasps> 2. The loot transfer part of the Volt Quest is tedious and lengthy. In summary, the Gold Herders earn an overall rating of 5.6 out of 10. Order of Souls This trading company focuses on killing any threat to the world of the Sea of Thieves. For the most part, your missions will include getting a list of skeleton captains and sailing to their island to kill them. There are also ship destroying missions where the player can sail out to an island in order to battle a fleet of ghost ships. In terms of money, Order of Souls earns a solid 7 out of 10. Stacking Order of Souls missions is a very viable strategy and can earn you a large haul of cash in the process. For fun, the Order of Souls earn an 8 out of 10, both because there are multiple mission types and because the missions are all engaging and satisfying. However, they only get a 5 out of 10 for length. The skeleton boss missions are fairly quick and fun, but the fleet missions can end up taking way too long. Overall, the Order of Souls gets a solid 6.6 .6 out of 10. Athena's Fortune To start off, if there is one thing I can reward the Athena's Fortune trading company for, it's creativity. Athena's Fortune combines a little bit of something from every trading company, and even adds some new things of its own. You could be doing anything from digging up chests to blowing up strongholds in a thunderstorm. I would give Athena's a money rating of 7 out of 10 though, because there are a lot of little non-valuable items included in the quests. But the fun rating is definitely a solid 9 out of 10. The reason it doesn't get a 10 is because there's very little replayability with the Athena's quests, but the first 5 times are extremely unique and fun. The length of Athena quests however is a 2 out of 10. Most of these quests will require you to dedicate at least an hour of non-stop playing to complete. Overall, Athena's Fortune gets a rating of 6 out of 10. Finally, it's time to talk about my personal favorite trading company. To earn gold with the Reaper's Bones, you can essentially do anything. They will purchase almost any item in the game for a fair price, much like the Sovereigns. Even better, you can multiply the gold you earn by doing any world event or killing any emissary captains. Because of all that, Reaper's Bones are a 10 out of 10 for gold earning, as well as a 9 out of 10 for fun. The only thing that I will fault the Reapers on is that it takes a fair amount of time to actually earn the gold multiplier. 
as well as the fact that finding emissary ships is nearly impossible on 95% of servers. The amount of time it takes to find emissaries does bump the reapers down to only a 5 out of 10 on length purely due to servers being way underpopulated. But all in all, Reaper's Bones is an 8 out of 10 trading company. Once you get all of your other trading companies maxed out, I would strongly suggest spending a majority of your time with either the Reaper's Bones or the Sovereigns. Merchant Alliance The Merchants are a loot hauling company who focus mainly on loot transferring. Your time with the Merchants will be spent mostly sailing from place to place to transfer loot. The missions they offer do have a nice focus on exploration that will have you scour the map for lost shipwrecks and forgotten loot stashes. None of the merchant missions require any sort of engagement, which will make them perfect if you're just playing Sea of Thieves in the background while doing something else. In terms of gold, merchants will make you a modest 7 out of 10. It all depends on the quality of your cargo when you deliver it, or your timeliness. For a fun rating, however, the merchants earn a deserved 2 out of 10 for having some of the least engaging activities in the entire game. The only reason they don't earn a zero is because exploring the underwater ships is pretty cool. In terms of length, the merchants get a solid 6 out of 10. The length of the mission is pretty random just depending on how far you have to go to deliver your items. Overall, the Merchant Alliance is a 5 out of 10 trading company.